Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel, I'm Fig, and today I'm gonna be talking about the 250 gallon smoker I have here. It's been a year since I got it, and I wanna go over how it's been going, and is the 250 too big for the backyard, or just enough, just right? We'll find out. All right, so I got this smoker just before Christmas of 2020. So it's been a little over a year. Uh, it's mid-January right now. I gotta say, this has been a godsend for me, for my catering business. I've cooked, wow, I wanna say over 200 briskets over the one year span. I cook almost every weekend, and uh, on average, we do about six brisket per cook. So that calculates maybe around 250 to 70 briskets in total. I'm not sure. But yeah, this has been a great workhorse. It cooks evenly from end to end almost. Uh, I'm gonna show you later how I'm gonna do like a biscuit test to see how even this smoker cooks. Now, I'm gonna show you the paint. So when I first got it, if you can see in my previous video, it's pretty shiny and glossy in the beginning because it had a clear coat over it. And if you see my last video, I put a cover over most of it and I fold this down whenever it's raining, but I stopped doing that. It's been uncovered, I wanna say the last eight, 10 months. I got lazy, it's just a hassle. Uh, putting this thing down, covering it every time it rains, I just let it go, it's been fine. There's no leaks whatsoever. Let me just go around and show you. There are some rust developing at places, certain places like the door hinges. I don't know if you can see it, like right here. I'm gonna do something and try to get rid of those. There's also some rust developing a little bit around the welds here. Other than that, let's see. Like on top of the firebox here, the paint seemed to be cracking and bubbling. And some on the handle here, and also on the firebox door hinge, like there a little bit. Other than that, everything is good. Also, some chipping on the coat here, as you can see, from the clear coat. I think from how hot it is on the top here, it just uh, burn off the clear coat. But it's only at this spot. I don't see it anywhere else here. Clear coat seems to be still doing its job. A little rusting on the bottom rack here. Yeah, that's about it. And then, so for the stack, the collapsible stack here, I decided to put a bolt here permanently. It's really not needed, um, but I, just for a peace of mind, it just helps seal up the two flanges better. It's not no smoke leaking or anything. Go around here. I'm gonna show you the inside. It's dirty. Uh, I haven't cleaned it up since a couple weeks ago during my last cook. So let's take a look at it. The top rack. I seldom use this two, the two top racks because these top racks is about 50 degrees hotter than the bottom and it's really hard to maneuver when you're loading it up with meat. It's hard to reach the back of the smoker there when the top rack is on, so I leave this out most of the time. The last time I did use it only because we were cooking prime rib and I need the top to kind of sear it towards the end of the cook, which was great. But yeah, I'm gonna get to cleaning this and afterwards, we're gonna fire it up and run a biscuit test, see how even it is. I took out all the grates and I'm gonna scrape the inside as you can see all that gunk and fat from the previous cook brisket fat 
prime rib drippings. Uh, I'm just gonna scrape it with this uh, plastic paint scraper first. I'm going to pressure wash it later. Alright, I'm also going to season the outside, spray the rough spots with some oil, but before that I'm using this steel wool pad and just rub on any rust I see and then later on I'm just going to coat it with oil. Now I'm going to show you how I assemble the uh, coal grate inside my firebox. That's my firebox set of fire. All right. That's how I normally start my fire. Charcoal briquettes on the bottom and a couple of logs. Close this up. All right, y'all. So the pit is up to temp. It's running about 250 on the bottom. So now I'm getting ready to put on the biscuits. Here we go. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put two biscuits to represent my brisket. One on the point, one on the flat. So here we go. Here you go. This will be one brisket, flat point, flat point, flat point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine brisket is the maximum I can cook on the bottom. And the top represents one, two, three, four. Four more briskets, but I never did it this way. It burns too hot on the top. But we'll see how this biscuit cooks. Let's go. All right, y'all. Fire's been going for about 10, 12 minutes. I'm gonna show you how hot it is. I have a infrared thermometer here just to show you. Firebox. Nothing. 70s. Fully insulated. As opposed to this, 140. It's pretty hot. But the sides here, cold to the touch. 60. This thing, 150. Where the paint flakes off, 180, 192. 190, 170, 150, 143, collector, 150, 160, smokestack, 160, 140, 134. So that just shows you how hot it is running outside. Let's see on this side, 143, 147, 173, 183, 198, 198 here, 160, cool to the touch, top of it, cool, and this is the temperature I'm running, 264 by the stack side on the bottom, 267 on the back by the firebox, 326 on the top, 294 on the top by the stack side. So let's see how the biscuits are doing now. Here we go. All right, uh, it's not quite 
cook yet. It's not browning yet. Let's see the back. Here you go, you can see, brown, kind of cooked. Top here, and the bottom, the back here, it looks like it's burning already. This is the hottest spot right here. So if I'm cooking nine brisket, it will stop like right here. It go one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So when I'm cooking brisket, I do nine max using only the bottom. The top is gonna be too hot. Okay, let's cook them a little bit longer. All right, y'all, it's about 20 minutes now. I'm gonna show you the fire I'm running. There it is. All right, and temperature right now, about 320 on the bottom. 378, 416 on the top. Let's see how we biscuit over. All right, let me open this one. Woo. As you can see, top one, crispy, kind of burnt. Bottom, ooh, that one, it's gone. This one, a little bit, okay. And if you see from this point forward, Everything's the same. And this is another reason why I don't use the top rack. I can, it's hard for me to reach towards the back there without burning myself. And this is where I put the top probes. One over there, one over there. And, oops, just fell. Done. Good. This one. About even, same color. All right, now let me try from the middle here. About the same color. Oh, hot. There, done. About the same. The top, you can see from the color. That's burnt. Okay, that's the most burnt. These are still okay. And there you go. All right, y'all, this is the next day. I'm just gonna show you what the biscuit's looking like. So I let it run for about 45 minutes and then I shut the damper both in the firebox and on the stack and let the fire die down. And this is what we have. This is the color from the top. They're about the same. Let's compare it from the bottom, a little bit lighter. And this will be from the top back grate, obviously darker. And this will be from the bottom near the fire, the darkest, it's burnt. Like so, it's the top here. This is from the bottom. So, it just goes to show you how even this thing is cooking on the bottom and how hot it is on the top. So I had the two probes one is on the bottom grate by the stack. One is on the top grate, and they're about 50 degree difference. And I have another one on the bottom right here in the back, and one more up here. And those two is about 70 degree difference. Yeah, let me just show you the soot mark here by the door opening. As you can see, it's only just by the doors, there's no marks going out, telling me that the door seals pretty good, no smoke leaks whatsoever. And I'm gonna show you right now the firebox. First of all, the rust spot from the other day is gone. I put canola oil and let it burn in and no more rust. And now I'm gonna show you what I had here from yesterday's fire. I used about four um, splits for about an hour and a half. And this is the remaining. This is what I do when I clean my ashes. I just knock it down at the bottom, like so. This is another reason that I like to use this setup and the remaining charcoal here, I could just use it for my next cup. And that's it. All right, to answer the question, whether a 250 is too big for the backyard, well, it all depends. I'm not talking about the size of the smoker itself. It's 10 foot long and about 30 inches wide. So if you have the space uh, in your backyard, then, you know, whether it's 
it fits or not. But as far as cooking, in the beginning, I would say 250, yeah, it's too big uh, for a backyard. But now, after a year cooking with it, I would say it's just right. Before, if I have like one or two brisket, I would use my Old Country Pecos. But the way that runs is so up and down. I gotta tend to the fire more. With this one, I use a little more logs, uh, a little more wood uh, during the brisket cook, but it's just less maintenance and the outcome is better. So now even for like smaller cooks, one brisket or even a couple of chickens, I still use this 250. So to answer that question, to, for me, it's not too big for the backyard. It's just perfect actually. Yeah, for those considering getting a propane tank smoker, a 250, or there's a 120, there's a 200, there's a 500, you gotta judge for yourself. As for me, 250 is just right for the backyard. You can do a little catering gig with it too. Thanks for uh, tuning in this video. I'm so grateful for everybody that subscribed, commented on the videos, and interacted with me. I feel like I learned a lot from you guys, sharing knowledge, especially about barbecue. It's really fun, it's my passion. So hopefully you enjoy this one, and leave me a comment below about what you think. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and click like. Alrighty, till the next time. Thank you guys.